So uh, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking, well, I need some help with my uh, WinUA uh, setup. So it's not an in-depth tutorial, it's more of a really basic setup guide just to get you started with uh, this very popular Amiga application. So just uh, start by um, opening up the WinU, uh, WinUA uh, application. Uh, and you'll be greeted by this uh, system uh, kickstart ROM required. So, WinUA has actually got um, alternative uh, kickstart files uh, pre-installed uh, by default, but most people will swear that the real thing is uh, a lot better. So, um, for now, I'm gonna just leave it under configuration as its uh, default alternatives. So. I'm going to just leave it at 1.3 ROM, which is uh, from your Amiga 500 um, computer, and leave it at the very basics for now, so 512 kilobyte slow RAM. And if you look in this list, you'll get different types of chipsets. So we got OCS and ECS, but like I said, whatever. So just leave it as default for now. And it'll also say under model A500. Uh, so I'm going to just leave it at that because most of the classic Amiga games are uh, A500, Amiga 500s. And next you have emulated drives that will say DF0 and DF1. So if you just picture a real Amiga, uh, when you inserted a floppy disk into the drive, it would recognize it on the desktop and display it's DF0 or DF1. So that's what this part is. and. Where it says select image file, if it's just a one game um, disc, a one disc game uh, you're going to play, uh, just select image. But if it's two discs, often Amiga games would come with two discs, just uh, check the DF1 and uh, follow through with the DF1, uh, select image. It's what I'm going to do with DF0, select image file. So select image file on DF0. And then we just go to find your uh, game, which is highly likely it's going to be in ADF format. Uh, ADF format is um, Amiga disk file, and uh, that's a very popular um, format which Amiga games are. So I'm going to just load up a very basic game. I've no idea what this is, whatever, but it's uh, 1990s. I'm guessing it's quite a, a early in the Amiga life sort of average game so just click on that and then you've got different options to look at here and you can uh, what I was saying just now about discs being multiple discs DF0 and DF1 say your game it's got say up to three discs four discs then you do each uh, checkbox the same and then you go to uh, these parts just here to select your upper discs for that game then you've got loads of different options it looks daunting but if you look into them it will make a bit of sense to you if you're if you was an Amiga uh, kid or adult back in the day so say under CPU you've got different types of CPU and I'm going to just leave this as default and we've got other options here and everything is literally uh, different configurations in the CPU speed and we've also got a little section here on Blizzard which is um, a video card obviously and then we look at RAM things like this so like I said just now I'm going to leave it as standard at 512 kilobyte which is a very very basic Amiga configuration for uh, RAM so loads of different options there, but like I say, keep saying, just leave everything very basic for now. And uh, CD and hard drives. Now you can actually set up um, a real operating system on for a real Amiga using this really cool um, application WinUA. But you know, that's a video for another time, and it's a uh, very in depth that one. And now, if you go down a bit further, you'll get display and it will just give you options to make the screen you know stretched you know 16 by 9 or the original uh can't think of the box <laughs> so full screen and i'm going to select uh, 1280 by 1024 so that should stretch out the screen and under settings if you select full screen if you want a full screen that is 
just leave it at full screen. So when the game starts, it will uh, obviously present a full screen rather than a little box. And then you can go to game ports and under here, um, so, you know, some Amiga games are run by mouse and keyboard, just mouse really, like things like Cannon Fodder, as you probably remember, or some of your uh, graphical adventure type games. So from here, you can set up your uh, joypad or joystick, whatever you've got, USB, whatever. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave all this as default and see where it goes, as long as get game loaded, and that's fine. And then you've got different I.O. ports, so uh, MIDI, parallel port for printer, that type of thing. I'm sure you could uh, somehow manage to hook up a dot matrix printer with this thing if you really wanted to, for the nostalgic experience. And anyway, so let's actually go into starting the game. So we've got the disk loaded up, loaded up the ADF file I was just talking about. Everything's on a very basic setting. So if we just go to start, And there we go. Now because I've not configured anything, I'm guessing there's defaults for the mouse where you can click past these screens. And you can even get the sounds of the floppy disk um, sounds. So when you pop in the ADF in them black screens like this, you can actually get the sound of the disk drive door that which really adds up to the experience, it's pretty cool. And there we go, like I said, no idea what this game is, some we were racing game, obviously. And uh, one of the good things about um, a lot of Amiga games is that most of them are uh, freeware, um, and they're actually still, people are actually still writing games to this day.